1990, the British author Roald Dahl, having suffered from one of the myelodysplastic syndromes, passed away at the age of 74. Note that I have said one of the myelodysplastic syndromes, because the myelodysplastic syndromes are actually a group of diseases, and the word syndrome tells us that this group of diseases have a number of features in common. So if we have disease 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 for instance, you can see that there are overlapping features but they are not exactly the same. And to understand myelodysplastic syndromes, uh, I hope to take you through a few basic aspects of production of blood cells in the bone marrow, what can go wrong and how these diseases uh, can be caused. Because although most medical students and doctors would be well aware of diseases like leukemia for instance, they often do not know or recognize the myelodysplastic syndromes, uh, a disease group which is more common than most leukemias. In order to understand how these diseases work, I'm going to use the example of a factory. Remember that the bone marrow is the factory of blood. Now let's look at the uh, 1964 book by Roald Dahl called Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And at that time the famous chocolate factories would often send slabs of chocolate to be tested as test samples to school children. And they would then give the company feedback and tell them if they were happy or if anything could be improved. So let's have a, use the example of uh, what we see here. This is a, a front page of, of the first edition of this particular book um, in the United States. And we can see a chocolate bar at the top, but you can also see that this chocolate bar is not normal. Now, if this chocolate bar looked like this after it was bought and eaten by a school boy or girl, that would be fine. But if this chocolate bar came straight out of the factory and looked like this, you would certainly not be happy. So let's say, um, if we look at this, from the factory to this chocolate bar, if this comes straight out of the factory like this, it means that there is something wrong. Uh, something wrong with the quality and there is something wrong with the appearance. So let's just say the look of this chocolate bar. This chocolate bar does not look normal. This is not what it should look like coming straight out of the factory. Now if you see a problem with quality or looks or even if you see that this factory for some reason is now not producing enough chocolate, underproducing, you would immediately go back to the factory so under producing, you would go back to the factory and say, is there a problem here? So let's put a big question mark here. Is there a problem in the factory? Now if you think of the systems in a factory, then you know that there will be a whole lot of processes happening. You will have a plan for, or in the case of chocolate, you may have a recipe for how to make this chocolate and this will then go through a number of machines and at the end of the day you may end up with a nice bar of chocolate. Now it should probably look better than this one that I've drawn here but let's say there should be a nice bar of chocolate at the end. It must taste good and it must look look good and if anything is wrong here you will go and start asking questions about each of the processes in the factory. Did anything go wrong any step of the way if anything was wrong with the final product? So let us replace the chocolate factory with a factory of blood. Now the factory of blood will be found in the bone marrow. The marrow is actually the factory of blood and it is found in many of the bones in the body. And this would help us understand one of the first parts of the word myelodysplastic uh, syndrome, the myelo, which is derived from the Greek myelos, which means marrow. So we know something is wrong with a factory, something is wrong with a marrow that leads 
to a challenge later on. So let's just quickly review what happens in the bone marrow. Now firstly, one must remember that in the bone marrow, and let's just make it, let's just draw it in purple perhaps, in the bone marrow there are a lot of cells um, called stem cells. Okay, let's just draw them there, stem cells. And these stem cells could be considered the parents of all blood cells. So in other words, from the stem cells, through a number of different steps, cells will go through different steps in their development, and you can see that the lines will move out as cells develop into and divide, and they will go through a number of steps to eventually become mature blood cells. And in the end, these mature blood cells will become what is called white blood cells. These are cells responsible to fight infection, red blood cells that carry oxygen, and platelets that prevent bleeding. So now let's go back to the example of this abnormal chocolate bar. Let's say you um, would look at the patient's blood because these cells are released from the bone marrow into the blood. So this, th these are inside the blood. They've now left the factory. If you look inside the blood and you see, listen, there is a problem here. There are either too few white blood cells, red blood cells, or platelets, or they look strange. They look funny like we saw here with the chocolate bar that looked funny, so they don't look normal. Or they may have a problem with their function. All of these things, problems with the number of cells, the function of the cells, or the look of the cells, will or may indicate that something is wrong in the bone marrow. Now obviously it could also be that there are ingredients missing. So one will first go and have a look and see are there any vitamin or iron deficiencies or maybe an infection or other problems that could cause uh, low blood cell counts. But if you don't find any of those and you still see that there are lots of uh, problems with these cells, they are decreased in number, so and, and a decrease in, in cell number we call cytopenia. So in the case of uh, red blood cells that are decreased, that would be anemia. Platelets are also called thrombocytes, so that would be thrombocytopenia, and a low white blood cell could be, count could be leukopenia. If you see these cytopenias, especially in conjunction with abnormal looking cells, then you would go back and look at the actual factory and see if something is wrong there. And this takes us to the second part of the word myelodysplastic. The word uh, this comes from being disformed or abnormal and plastic is actually a, a word that is derived from a Greek word for to form or formation. So what we are dealing with here is a disordered or abnormal formation of blood cells in the marrow. Myelodysplastic syndromes thus refer to a problem in the marrow. So something went wrong in the marrow that led to abnormal looking cells that are decreased in number and decreased in function. Now when this happens, when you have a decreased number of white blood cell count, white blood cells, or uh, poorly functioning white blood, white blood cells, that means your Im immune system is not working properly and you will be more prone to infection. In the same way, if your red blood cell uh, count is low, you will be anemic and you will be tired and easily fatigued. When the platelets are low or abnormal in function, then you will be prone to bleeding. And these patients would offer complain of nosebleeds or bleeding gums when they brush their teeth. So the question is, what happened in the bone marrow in the factory that led to these abnormally looking cells and abnormal numbers in the cells? And to answer this question, we have to go back to the cells that we talked about in the beginning called the stem cells. The stem cells, being the parent cells of all the blood cells in the body, contain in its nucleus DNA. Now DNA is basically code. 
and this code determines many different things. The code will determine what the cells will look like, what they will look like, and how many they will be. So the numbers of cells. It will also determine the function of these cells. So you can now already see that if anything went wrong with the code, that will or could affect what the cells look like, how many they are, and their function. So this is exactly the problem in MDS or myelodysplastic syndrome. Something goes wrong in the DNA and what goes wrong there we call mutations. And these mutations affect the code that will determine the number of cells that will be produced, how fast they will be produced, how long they will live and how they will function. So what tends to happen in these patients, if you go in and look at the actual marrow under the microscope, you will see that there's a lot of activity. There's a lot of cell production. So one becomes two and two becomes four and so forth and so forth into the millions. But the cells are supposed to develop through all these different steps to maturity. Remember that we showed um, all these different adult cells, white blood cells, red blood cells and then platelets. So you need these mature cells but what happens here is that the cells do not get to maturity. For some reason because of a problem in the code, because of these mutations, the cells tend to die off at earlier phases in their development in the factory and they never get to adulthood. These are the adults. They're supposed to do the work in the, in the blood. Now when this happens is um, you can see that you will develop cytopenias, low blood counts, because the cells don't adequately develop. On the other hand, what can happen here is that th these cells early in the development, uh, we call them early precursors, they will still divide and become many and they will increase greatly in number. And the very early ones have this special name called blasts. And when the blasts become too many in the bone marrow, as a matter of fact more than 20% of the cells, of the nucleated cells, we call this an acute myeloid leukemia. So from this we can see that the two major problems that we develop with myelodysplastic syndrome is that of bone marrow failure. Bone marrow failure, in other words, the bone marrow is not, is, fails to produce enough blood cells or f uh, normally functioning blood cells. And this could vary from very mild, maybe just a, a mild anemia, to very severe where the patient have a lot of abnormal cells and perhaps all the different cells, white cells, platelets and red blood cells are low uh, or dysfunctional. Secondly, the um, MDS patients are characterized by a risk of transformation to acute myeloid leukemia, which is a very serious blood cancer. Now, the risk will vary. In the mild cases, it will be low. In the severe cases, it will be high. And the idea would be to identify the patients early when they're in the mild phase and treat them to prevent bone marrow failure and the development of acute myeloid leukemia. Once you, uh, the patient is in the severe phase, this may be very difficult to do. And sometimes only a bone marrow transplant can cure a patient like this. So if we go back to the initial term myelodysplastic syndrome, we can now see that the myelo refer to the factory problem. Dysplastic tells us the, that these cells do not look normal. And the um, syndromes tells us that there are different diseases in this group, each with varying degrees of cytopenia and abnormally looking cells. And the reason for that is that the different uh, diseases within this group have different mutations. So there's a whole range of different mutations, each of which can give rise to different uh, diseases and different risks of developing bone marrow failure or acute myeloid leukemia. It is very important to recognize this disease. It's common. 50,000 American people suffer from this right now and 15,000 new cases 
are diagnosed in America every year. And unfortunately, this is probably one of the conditions that doctors really do not know enough about. So if you find any patient with a low blood count or abnormally looking cells on the peripheral blood smear, ask yourself and look for any vitamin deficiencies, infections or other common reasons for this. But if you cannot find any, you must do a bone marrow, which means you put a needle in the bone marrow and you draw some of that marrow out and look under the, send, it, send it to the pathologist to look under the microscope and they will quickly tell you that there is dysplasia, which is abnormally looking cells and that the bone marrow production is not right and then you can make, uh, usually in conjunction with the pathologist, you will be able to make a diagnosis of MDS. It's a disease most commonly seen in the elderly, sometimes seen in younger people, but more than half the patients uh, are older than 70 years uh, of age. And we must also remember that it is either primary or secondary. The primary ones, which comprise about 90% of these cases, do not have a clear cause. The secondary ones are the ones that will tell you that they've previously been exposed to toxins or chemicals or chemotherapy or even high dose radiation. And then often a few years later, after they've had that, they can develop bone marrow failure due to myelodysplastic syndrome with an increased risk of developing acute myeloid leukemia. Very important to recognize uh, this 10% of patients because their treatment may be slightly uh, different.